Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over the most detailed governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC roadmap that there is within cybersecurity. I do have a sheet below that you can follow along with all of these things that I am about to go over. So make sure to check that out below in the description. If you are completely confused and don't know where to start, I'm going to go over what exact roles exist within GRC in the cybersecurity space. I'm going to go over the skills that you need for basically every GRC job. I'm going to go over various frameworks and regulations and how to choose the one that would be most suited for your specific condition. I'm going to be going over the most popular GRC or governance risk and compliance certification and also how you would choose one based on your current position that you are in life. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over the best training that you can start with to, if you're new to my channel, I'm Nick Cole, and I currently work within governance, risk, and compliance. GRC, or governance, risk, and compliance within cybersecurity, is a really, really broad topic. In fact, so broad, a lot of people don't know that they work in GRC at different companies. There is no GRC department. What exactly is the very first thing that you need to know when trying to start your career in cybersecurity and governance, risk, and compliance? The first one is just your mindset. A lot of people have a defeatist view or they have lots of doubts, like they can't do something else than what they're currently doing or they can't make that much money because they've never made over $50,000 or something like that. So the attitude that you approach this is the absolute most important thing as it will decide if you're going to be successful or if you're going to be defeated. Just know that there 100% will be challenges and you have to overcome those challenges. You can spend all your time watching these motivational videos and all of that, but really you just need to know I can, I dare, I do, and I will. If you just keep that in the forefront of your mind, you can really overcome everything. Otherwise, you're going to start doubting yourself. You're like, oh, I'm going to just stay at the help desk for the rest of my life. A positive mental attitude when it comes to changing your career into GRC is by the most important thing. And I would really get that right before starting anything else, right? If you feel like you're not going to be able to do it, then you might as well not even try. The second step that you need when trying to change your career into GRC, which many of you already have, is a good foundation of IT basics and information technology literacy. If you are working in IT, you would only be working within a specific domain. For instance, you might be a system administrator and only work with servers. But when you work within governance, risk, and compliance, you're going to have to know a little about a lot of different topics to keep up with the conversations and what is going on. Oftentimes, You'll be working with cloud systems, you might be working with AI systems, and you may be working with on-premise systems at the same time, depending on where you're working. So you're going to need to know all of that, like what is on-prem, what is, what is the cloud, and then you're also going to need to know networking and how networking for cloud differs from networking for on-premise equipment. You're going to need to know the basics of databases and storage. You're going to need to understand what an application is and the basics of application security. You're going to need to understand what endpoints are and compute power and what exactly measures are put into place to help protect those things. You're also going to need to know identity access management. That's really, really important. And it's even more important within the cloud as, as identity access management or IAM is basically the new perimeter, but for the cloud. If you really want to like dig deeper into what IT basics are, I suggest this open MRS project in AWS. And this, if you can understand it and study it, you'll have a really good base knowledge of IT and different measures that you can put in place to protect an application for a healthcare clinic. The second part that you're going to need to know after knowing all of these basics is you're going to need to know what cybersecurity basics are. These are things like what is risk? What is the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability? And how does it apply 
to this IT environment that you have? What exactly are you going to protect? And the thing is, is each component will have different things that can be compromised that can that can lead to issues with confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So you're going to need to know that for networks, databases, storage, and all of those components that I mentioned in that first part. So that is really, really important. Now, a good place to start with this is NIST 800-171. And why do I say dash 171 and not 800-53 like most people say? It's because NIST 800-53 is ex really like overkill for most places. It's just a lot, right? So I don't suggest anyone start out there. NIST 800-171 is a really good lightweight version that you can apply to that OpenMRS application that I mentioned earlier for a non-secure government system, basically. Knowing those security control families, such as access controls and audits and how it applies in to that environment will put you ahead of the majority of people because most people can't apply their knowledge to a real world scenario because they're just studying definitions. Really like understand how it applies to what you're trying to learn. You're also gonna need to know different types of threat types for each one of those components. Things like ransomware, malware, insider threats, and how that system can be compromised by say a disgruntled employee and what controls are put into place to prevent that disgruntled employee from deleting all of your infrastructure. Understanding those threats and vulnerabilities that OpenMRS might have, and then also understanding risk and how to mitigate risk, right? So everything has risk, but what are things you can do to reduce the likelihood and the impact of a threat exploiting a vulnerability? If you can actually explain that to an employer, you'll be ahead of the majority of people. I suggest using that open MRS thing that I just showed you or making up your own scenario, stay at your own company and really trying to figure out how all of that works. The best place you could actually present that to maybe a different department. The best company to get a job at is the one that you're currently at. So don't neglect transferring departments. If you're say working at HR at a company, maybe you can move over to the security department. The next phase in learning governance, risk, and compliance within cybersecurity is you need to understand different regulations and what regulations apply to your current industry or previous industry if you're unemployed, and, and then really digging deep. So in order to do that, you have to have a wide knowledge of what regulations are within cybersecurity. There's HIPAA, there's GDPR, there's for payment card industry, there's ISO 27001 for like the international standard. There's FISMA and FedRAM for the government, HIPAA for medical and healthcare, and sometimes multiple regulations apply. You don't need to know all of these in depth. I see a lot of people suggesting that you need to learn all of these, but that is absolutely insane. You just need to know one really well. And I wouldn't suggest going to a different industry because then number one, you need to learn a whole new skill set. And number two, you need to learn a whole new industry. If you're coming out of the military, FISMA and FedRAMP are by far the best regulation to learn and what frameworks support that regulation, which I'll go over next. If, say, you're a nurse, then learning HIPAA in depth will give you a unfair advantage. You also have to look at the pool that you're competing against. If you're a nurse and you have really good understanding of HIPAA, and you've also been studying that extra IT knowledge that you may not know, when you're going against someone who may be from a different industry like government trying to get that medical care job, you look a lot better. You're competitive. Whereas if you as a nurse that knows HIPAA was going to go to the government because people are telling you that it's the easiest thing ever, you have no unfair advantage as you're not familiar with the government. You may not have connections within the government. You don't know the lingo of the government and what regulations may apply to that. So it's going to be a lot harder for you to stand out next to someone who already has that. After you learn those regulations, then maybe you can jump industries if you absolutely hate your current industry. After you have 
dived into that one regulation and you know it pretty well and you know how it applies to say the open MRS context and those IT those IT components that I mentioned earlier, then you're really going to want to master one framework. The framework is not a regulation. A regulation is required by law. And if you don't follow that, you're going to get fined millions of dollars. How different companies meet that regulation is really up to the company. A lot of people use NIST cybersecurity framework to meet those regulations. Banking is also actually really big on using NIST cybersecurity framework. Some people use ISO 27001 and 2 to meet that regulation. NIST risk management framework is also really popular within the government to meet that FISMA FedRAMP regulation for the government. I suggest learning the one that you use at your current company or figuring out what they use and then really going into depth. NIST cybersecurity framework is really high level and business focused. So it's probably one of the easiest, easiest frameworks. NIST cybersecurity risk management framework is essentially the entire process of how you would set up a security program and keep it and maintain it. ISO 27001 and 27002 is probably the highest demand because you can get a certificate with it. And if you get that certificate, then your business opportunities grow like a lot. So it's all just going to depend on where you are and which one that you would learn. After doing all of this and really understanding how all of this relates to that open MRS AWS project I showed earlier that that clinic, right? Make sure you know the context. Then I would do a really good project based on that environment. So say you're securing a web application, choosing an industry that it's in, such as healthcare, choosing that one regulation and then creating a, a program around and then making it say HIPAA compliant or FedRAMP compliant and all of that. Don't do all of them because there's no way you're going to be able to understand all of them. Just go one in depth. And then once you understand one, you'll be able to apply what you know to many different environments. Every GRC cybersecurity project will boil down into these six things. And I do have a video on it, which I'll post here. What is GRC in 15 minutes? And I walk you through basically a security program that you can apply to anything. Every project you're going to do, you're going to need to identify the business, regulatory, and security requirements. The next step is you're going to have to know the system boundary and the assets that exist within that. So is this cloud? Is there networking? What, what is the compute power? What, what servers are there? And all of that. You're really going to need to know the assets. Then once knowing the assets, you're going to need to determine what risk you're at currently. Now, if this is a new environment, then you'll have to create a risk register. If this is a current one, then you'll need to do a, like a just an initial risk assessment and determine what, what threats there are, what the vulnerabilities, and what's the likelihood that that vulnerability is going to exploit is going to be exploited by that threat, right? So what's the likelihood and the impact? And so really understanding those risks, really, really important. Then you're going to need to select and justify different controls based on this risk assessment. You can go through doing defense of depth and going through each layer is really, really useful and really understanding what risks are at each one of those layers. And then you're going to need to select and justify those security controls, which you can do because you just did the risk assessment. And you're going to show that to management. And that is a thing called traceability. And then from there, you'll want to do another risk assessment to show that you have improved. And you're also going to want to audit that infrastructure to make sure the security controls are put into place and that they remain effective. Every GRC project will be compromised of will will have those those six steps basically and you can apply it to everything now after you do all of this then you're going to want to get a GRC cybersecurity certification i have this last because these are hard to pass without any context and if you have this certificate without any experience a lot of people use brain dumps so they kind of just cheat on the test and everybody knows this so you really want 
to have that project. You want to have the actual knowledge to back that you actually deserve this certificate and that you have the knowledge required. Essentially, a cybersecurity certification is just saying, hey, I have this knowledge. You don't have to test me on it because they already, a third party, audited me on this knowledge, right? So make sure that you have the knowledge that is in that specific certification that you have. So some really, really common cybersecurity certifications is it's actually going to depend on the industry that you're in. If you're within the government, they're under FISMA and FedRAMP, which uses NIST Risk Management Framework. And so the Certified Governance Risk and Compliance Cert by, not ISACA, ISC Squared is actually really valuable. For the, say, finance, if you're in finance, CISA is actually mandated by a lot of places to become an IT auditor. There's also the CRISC, C-R-I-S-C by ISACA. If you really like risk, this is a great GRC certification to get. If you're wanting to become a GRC manager or compliance manager, getting the CISP or the CISM is a really good place to start. Those certifications are a little bit more advanced, but they do teach a really good view of cybersecurity. If you are more in the beginning stages and you just want to become maybe like an entry, it become just the land your first like GRC role. I would say the, the, the CRISC ISACA would actually be really beneficial to help you study risk. And also the CISA would also really help you like learn risk because that is auditing knowledge. CISM and CISP is great if you're wanting to become a manager, but they are a little bit more advanced. Now, and also when getting these GRC cybersecurity certifications, you also have to keep in mind a lot of them require maintenance. So they require you to do continuing education. They also require you to pay a pretty large fee ranging from like $200 to like $500 every three months. And I've, I've let cybersecurity certifications expire because I didn't want to pay these fees and do these ridiculous requirements. So keep in, in mind that there is a maintenance cost for these. So you can collect certifications if you want. I really think over one is kind of just overkill. Just one, land that job, and then you have experience and you can create your own projects at work that really help the company that you're working for. And you can put it on your resume. So what exactly is the best governance, risk, and compliance training out there? Where should you start in your journey? Well, if you're completely confused and you don't have any tactical knowledge of where to start, I did create the 100-day GRC challenge. This is basically 100 days, and each day you're going to get a bite-sized 30-minute lesson that will teach you exactly what you need to know. And you don't have to dedicate hours upon hours every day for like two weeks to really get through it. I actually had a huge course and the completion rate was really, really low. And so this course, 30 minutes a day, actually has a 75% completion rate. It is a guided journey that brings you from not knowing anything about governance, risk, and compliance, and it brings you into actually knowing something, into actually mastering the, the NIST risk management framework and understanding how it applies to the open the health clinic application that I was talking about earlier. It helps you build momentum if you have no idea where you are wanting to start. And so for a limited time only, you will get $100 off below in the description and that expires really, really shortly. The hardest thing is, is gaining that momentum and gaining enough momentum for escape velocity meaning getting out of where you are into somewhere you want to be making more money and not being stressed out all of the time. But that is below, so make sure to sign up for that. All right, and I will see you later. Bye.